Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. And if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment, how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribe to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. It is early morning at the Bedfordshire Steam Rally and I'm here because a friend of mine owned an engine and was short of a pair of hands for today. The only problem is that although he told me where he was going to be, I didn't listen. I went, well, it can't be that hard to find an engine, can it? Turns out there's 85 engines here today, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So the first job is to actually find where he's parked. This was easier said than done, because there were indeed a large amount of engines, including many still on their low loaders. To make matters worse, the show was full of other interesting gubbins, like vintage lorries and ex-army vehicles, including green goddesses, and these things. I want that, and I want that, and I want that, and showmans. And because I am easily distracted, when I saw a tractor trundling along, I decided to follow that, which led me to this wonderful old thing, which is a Saunderson, basically the very early tractor from the period of crossover and steam. And then I found the lineup of the tractors. So rather than going and finding the steam engines, I decided just to look through all of these, including the little ransom scrawler, this Alice Chambers B. And then the standard lineup are things like Dexters, Fergusons, 35s, T20s, and Majors. Eventually, however, I managed to get my way back to the steam engines and found my friend and his Chemna and was immediately put to work. I was given one of the most glamorous jobs, emptying the ash pan, getting rid of the remains of the previous fires that had fallen through the fire bars. And once I'd done that, we could build our fire and light it, and the engine slowly started to come back round into life. There were lots of interesting things going on as well, like this traction engine minus a chimney moving around without any steam, because it was being pushed by this absolutely awesome scammel. I think it's the scammel anyway. Whatever it is, I want it. That's proper cool. With a fire lit, the next job was to start cleaning, to go over the whole engine's paintwork, to remove any grit and grime that could cause wear, and to get it nice and shiny for the public to enjoy. With two of us, this wasn't a too big a job. This Kemner is a really rare engine, with only, I think, nine left in existence, and only two in the UK, so being able to help out with it was a real honour, and it really is an absolutely cracking piece of kit. The engines all around us were starting to come back into life, but with our engine clean there was one important job left, and that was to go and get ourselves some breakfast. But I can't film and eat, so we'll just stop this here. By the time we'd finished our breakfast, many of the engines had steam up and had begun moving around, and I decided that I would take the long way back to the Chemna so I could see some of them. There was a wide variety of engines, from the full-size varieties down to miniatures, coming in both the medium and the tiny varieties. There were also several demonstrations going on, including working saw benches, seen here with a matador timber tractor adding another log to the saw bench. Also in operation was something that I've not seen working in years, a threshing drum, complete with people on top throwing in your harvested crop and this machine would separate it. All the straw would come out the back and then be turned into bales by this thing and then all of the actual seed, the useful product, would be separated by that. I also love the belt, just how much it waves around. I'm always in awe of how this thing just stays on, and I could just watch this for hours. But then I walked on because there was even more stuff to see, like this steam lorry. However, perhaps the coolest thing at the whole show was this homemade contraption, based on a dump truck chassis like my own, with the steam engine going down and driving the original gearbox. This was absolutely awesome. Also of interest were a couple of Ruston steamrollers. Yes, that Ruston who built my 48. So I thought that was kind of cool to see. There was also the playpen, an area where owners could take their engines, couple up to the load and show just what their machines were made of. And 
After all of my hard work of going and looking at things, I thought it was time for an ice cream. After all, it was hot, and what else do you do at a show? You look at steam engines, you have an ice cream. And with nothing to actually do on the engine, and ice cream in hand, I took a step back to watch other engines go by. I found all these watching engines going past to be quite exhausting, so I went and got myself a drink and perched on top of the Kemba to have a rest and just sat and watched the motion as it ticked over. I've always found this to be something utterly fascinating and magical. And then before my very eyes I witnessed a chase happen as one of the traction engines left. It was followed very closely by a Land Rover. Look at that tailgating. And as our neighbour disappeared, we too thought it was time that we went out for a spin. 
so we knocked the engine into gear and set off across the rally field. It was an amazing experience to be on a traction engine surrounded by so many other vehicles in steam and moving about the field. There is of course one big question, and that is, where exactly does one go when one takes a traction engine for a trundle at this kind of event? Well simply, we did the same as everybody else, and we headed off towards the bar. Now this was somewhat wasted on me because I don't drink, and as the Chemner didn't need any attention, this gave me a good opportunity to go off and hub and explore. Which started off with the lineup of showman's engines, having these magnificent, stunning engines lined up in front of the fair is absolutely wonderful, and it could only be better if they were going to be running into the night. Which it turns out, they were going to be. So I thought that was enough of looking at them for now and we'd come back under the cover of dark to see them working properly. I had a quick look at some of the other vehicles, like some of the Scammels and the military display, which included things like a Hummer and I think these Ferret Scout cars. I'm pretty sure they're Ferrets anyway, and certainly I really want one. I think they're awesome. By the time I'd finished looking at things and talking to people, the owner of the Kemda had finished his drink and it was time to go for a bit more of a trundle. For this, once again, I was acting as the steersman, which means that I was the one controlling the direction by spinning the steering wheel. I have no control over the speed or the direction. That's all down to the driver, and neither do I have any of the responsibility. The driver is the one in control. He's looking after the water, the fire, the speed, and the direction, and he's ultimately responsible for the engine. I am just a luxury extra controlling which direction we go. Obviously, we need to work together. There's no point in the driver open the regulator if I'm pointing the wrong way with the wheels. And obviously I need to keep a good lookout to make sure we avoid things, but if anything goes wrong, the driver needs to be able to stop. This also applies to things like road rollers where you need a separate license. The driver is the one who needs the license. The steers person, like me, doesn't actually need that roller license to be able to steer it. And with that cleared up, we trundled on until we came across, yes, you guessed it, another bar. This time I elected to stay with the engine, bewitched by the motion as it slowly turned over, and also just enjoying watching all the other engines trundling past. I don't think I can, in living memory at least, remember being to a show with this many engines, and watching them just go past was absolutely brilliant. And it wasn't just the steam engines. For me, an enthusiast of all things old and weird, seeing the lorries and the tractors going past just made this a wonderful afternoon. This engine was also very, very rare, being one of the few traction engines that Fowler built as showman's engines that still survive today. And as you can see, it's currently not a showman's engine, which gives it quite a strange and distinctive appearance. featuring in the lorry category of exceptionally cool stuff was this pulling tractor called Major Tom. Presumably it once started off life as a major. But look at that. That, that is very, very cool. When 
Whenever there was a pause in the traffic running past, I would return to the footplate of the Kemner to watch the motion take over, being absolutely mesmerised by just how slowly and how smoothly it would continue to work. This engine is a double high, meaning it has two cylinders, unlike say the Marshall opposite which only has one. That engine needs to have a certain amount of inertia to throw the flywheel over to keep it turning over. The Kemner with its two cylinders, both double acting, both offset by 90 degrees, never requires that inertia to keep it running. It's constantly either pushing or pulling with one or both of the pistons in the cylinders. And it's just glorious. As the day was getting on, we decided it was time to make our leave and put the engine back into motion and headed off. This time we were going towards the playpen to have a couple of trips around and to hang out with one of the owner's friends who had a steamroller. And as we arrived, we were greeted to the sight of two of the miniatures coupled together working hard with a load. Finished the stuff. I'll have a look. I said I'll find you. That's all it is. 
I thought it was a bad knackered one anyway to start with. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I used some beers and a rapid snack. This thing, there's so much stop in the transmission. One minute is on the floor and... Well, that's what I meant, that's why they do it tonight. Like, uh, that is, yeah. Well, they want to go left. With the light turning golden and starting to fade, we took the decision to go and put the engine away. Although many other owners weren't deterred by us, with them still running their engines way into the evening. This thing is called the flea. Then, as the sun set, the only thing to do was to wait for dark, because that's when the magic happens. The most impressive thing about the fair was that all the power, all the electricity, was coming from the showman's engines themselves. This was a steam-powered fair, exactly how it's meant to be. And down this end, I was away from the copyrighted music, so we can actually listen to the sounds of the organ without me getting a copyright strike on YouTube. Something I thought that was particularly cute was the fact that the miniature showman's engines were alongside their full-size brethren, also generating electricity. It was like father and son together, it's just very, very cute. The full-size engines weren't just providing power to the fair, one of them had been placed outside the bar to provide illumination to the area. Some of the rides were gluttons for electricity, meaning that the engines powering them had to work quite hard. It was really satisfying to hear the chuff of an engine working in the night, but it meant that their crews had to work quite hard, making sure that they were fed and watered in order to be able to keep supplying that electricity to keep the ride running all the way through the night. For some people, it was a nice evening to enjoy the rides. For the crew, it was an evening of working late. With some of the engines, I found myself mesmerized to how the belt stayed on. Like this one, just watching the patterns and the ripples in it was just magical, almost like it was alive.
In amongst the lineup of ornate, beautiful showman's engine, there was an imposter, this agricultural engine. And you may be wondering why it was parked up next door to the showman's. And that's because one of them, this one, spoiler certificate, had expired a few days earlier. So this agriculture was actually running its dynamo to generate electricity, and I thought that was really cool. <laughs> Something a little bit unusual to see. But that wasn't the only non-showman's engine still working at this time of night. No, a few of the owners were still up and about and trundling about on their engines, including this one that had some very fancy LED headlights. And as they trundled off to bed, I think it's time to draw this video to a close. Thank you all for watching, and thank you to everybody who organised the Bedfordshire Steam Fair. What an incredible show, and I can't wait to return again. If you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere over there for one of the other videos we've done, or beneath it for one of our railway adventures. Thanks for watching, guys. And of course, we'll see you next time. What an experience, and what an atmosphere to behold. This... This was truly, truly magic.